if we can make sure the hammies are good and the glutes are good and even the upper back's good, we can make sure that then that targeted area that... It's like giving it a good support system, it's, right? It's exactly like that. It's like surround your lower back with stronger individuals and it gets stronger itself. It'll be 95% of the five people it's surrounded by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Belichick's so much trash. It was all Tom Brady the whole time. Dude, you're so all Tom stupid. Brady. It's unbelievable how dumb you are. No, don't insult my intelligence. You are. So I am pointing dumb. to who won titles, no matter where you're he went. So he's he Tom Brady's incredible. I know. Hundred. Can we keep this in the podcast? Probably. How stupid Earl is right now. The, all I'm you saying are so stupid. Is let me let me Bill Belichick's career was made off Tom Brady. Oh my god, you're so dumb. No, I'm not. He, Look at someone like Andy Reid. All right. Had, Andy Reid was good in Philadelphia with McNabb. He was good in KC with, I'm not talking about Andy Reid. Well, I'm he just is saying good. how Belichick's overrated. You're dumb. Overrated, you're underrated, dumb. overrated. You're so dumb. Nope, sticking to you it. You have to realize, okay, this is, uh, for the audience. Y'all notice how Dane keeps attacking me, too? Because <laughs> it, it's like, you know, it's funny that when it comes to things like sports, you just throw, like, personally, not you. Yeah. I personally will throw everything out the window. I'll kill you. <laughs> I would have talk so much trash. It's like any... Any urge of respect, <laughs> gone. I will ruin you to live with every Man. ounce. Let me let, hang, hang on. Let me let me. What let, happened to that nonviolent communication, homie? Uh, I've I've been. Uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, Marshall, Marshall. The other dude. You were. Yeah. Um. I, yeah. Anyway. I want to say Marshall McLuhan because just like the mediums, the message type I've, of thing. I've but. got. I've got to look, but. But that's not the same person no, I'm talking about. No. I want to go back to this Belichick discussion quick. Oh, Homer. He, first of all, has 300 wins. He's probably going to break. How many of those were with uh, Tom Brady? Get out of here. George Hallis's point. He Or, no, Shula would be next. I think Shula's at 326, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, someone who could actually finish a oh, like I, lossless season. Also... No, Eli Manning. We have there to remember to... that when Brady was there, and this is for me. I don't even Patriots, like Tom Brady, but I got to recognize the Jets were bad, the Bills great. were bad, the Dolphins were bad. That division was bad. They were terrible. Now that division is loaded. All those teams are good. Sounds like a sob story for why they have. No, well, it's just you guys are stupid. Do they have two wins now. Yeah, they just beat the Bills, who oh. are good. And I you, actually, I I told Taman that if the Bills won, we were, they, we were about to throw. And I was like, I said, oh, the Patriots are going to play the Bills today. Or they're going to beat the Bills. And he turned, he's like, they're going to get waxed. I was like, if they win, you owe me a sandwich. As soon as the game ended, I sent him a screenshot. And I told Lincoln, because Lincoln's still trying to figure out if he's like a Patriots fan or an Eagles fan. And I was like, listen. Be an Eagles fan. I was like. He was like, well, maybe if I'm a 49ers fan. I was like, no, 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 no. That's not how this is going to work. <laughs> you either are an Eagles fan or you're a Patriots fan. There's no choosing. You the get nice to pick is, those two. As That's you it. get older, you can always identify with the geographical location. And no one's going to yeah, question you. Yeah. As a kid, it's just are you a front runner or not? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, it's funny because I had a I went on a run yesterday, and that sort of leads into our podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, about how you hurt yourself, probably. Or well, was this a few months back you hurt yourself? A few months back, I hurt myself. I was talking to my buddy who's run 12 marathons. Jeepers. So he he was with me. It's a lot of running. And he he has a podcast as well, actually. He does uh, sail, like he sails boats all over the world. Basically, now what he does is he has two boats, one in the Pacific, one in the Atlantic, and people will contact him to go on these boat excursions. I will not contact him because I get sea legs very uh, slowly and I, i'm like if i've never taken dramamine but i'm sure i need an overdose of it to not vomit <laughs> yeah yeah i don't i've never had that but i could see it my I, dad took me shark fishing when i was a kid and yeah, i ended up throwing everywhere. up and it was just it was miserable so it, <laughs> this i'm tying this together back to our football discussion actually because he's a diehard eagles fan and didn't he coach the browns and they were horrible yeah, and, the and they got rid of him. Yeah, yeah. Dude, this well, is that was his to... first stop. Though. Oh wow! There's a lot of people who get coach of the year their first year. So, <laughs> Andy, my buddy, was like, 
You he mean gets, Andy Reid, the no, better Andy coach? Shell. Well, he oh. he gets mad at me because he can have a conversation like, who's your favorite eagle? And I was like, dude, for me, my favorite eagle is Jeremiah Trotter or probably – I like Westbrook and I like Brian Dawkins and I like McNabb because he won. Like, yeah, McNabb was incredible. Yeah, and I, I always say to him, he gets he gets mad at me because I he's like, you're so stupid. You know more about the Eagles than ninety nine percent of Eagles fans, but you like the Patriots. I was like, well, I don't dislike the Eagles. I like watching. You're just the a Eagles. front runner. Yeah, like no, yeah. that's that's false <laughs> yeah, yeah. because I I was a Patriots. I have like fifteen. Drew you Bledsoe have a starter's cards. jacket of the Patriots for when you. were I a kid. had a starter jacket. I had a pillow covered in slobber. I had everything. You know how I know I'm a Rams fan? I had a St. Louis Rams <laughs> yeah, starter yeah. jacket. The when starter I was a kid. jackets were so awesome. Yeah, they're still awesome. Like I don't know how the like whatever generation it is now hasn't brought it back. I think like, they did try. I think they tried one year. It's. At some it's point, it's going to happen. Yeah. It is going to happen. I can't wait. So I, we're going to be talking about... I think I may get like a Denver Nuggets one just because... Yeah, you have to. You have to. Yeah. yeah. Did anyone see that React video Dane was so graciously let me do on Peak Strength with him? That was fun. We, we got did everyone notice how much bigger I am than Dane? They were like, man, Earl looks bigger, but he's drastically weaker. He can't even he can't even bench... He can't even squat as much as Dane can back squat. Or I, Dane can bench. I, wait. That yes, a, I can. I just showed you a video. Did you do 150 more. for 10? Yeah, I've done 154 for six sets of your, six. How did your back feel? I've done once. I did 160 for a set of nine. Like that would have been three, four weeks ago. That's pretty good. Yeah, I could. I had more too. I just racked it. All right. So tying this into the podcast, where, where did, where have you hurt your back? Like where you're like, dude, I, I thought I was dead. Oh, I did it. I was in high school. Oh, geez, that's the worst because you don't know the pain yet. Yeah, I was deadlifting too, like in a comp, and they just like put weight on and said, go do it. And like, I don't, we were just talking about Clark, and I, I don't Clark lifts. Yeah. Like, I'm fearless. Like, I was the kid, like a teenager who would ride BMX bikes and like go yeah, off. And, just and I'd fall. Like, I yeah. wasn't good at it. I was bad at it. So, like, I took my <laughs> bumps. Yeah. Um, I used to love mountain biking like that. Like we would set trails up and just go, just try and do like a little side thing, and then you just eat it over the yeah. front of the bars. No, I was not good, not good. Um, and I went to deadlift this bar, and I'm just like Jefferson curling, trying to do it. <laughs> and I did something like hor- horrendous to one of. I think it was the right side of my back. I probably like popped a disc or something. Yeah, yeah. Dumb like that. Like 15 years How old. How long I can't do you think even... it took you to recover? I don't know. I, I'm kind of a dunce when it comes to being injured. Yeah. Like, I try to do stuff the next day. Right. Because the pain's just going to go away somehow miraculously. Yeah. Or I'm going to learn how to just work through it. it it's not a good look. Like right, it, it's, right. Long term, it doesn't pay off. But so, from, like, a tough guy perspective, I feel tough. I always... But I'm not. It, it's sort of funny. I have two stories. This is about your back. Well, I, I've got one about Alex Rose. So, Alex Rose called me last week oh recent yeah and he's like it's the day after a leg day and he's like dude i'm not joking i haven't been doing my mobility as well i've been and he drives quite a bit for his job and he said he he he's in his car and he's huge like he's huge and yeah can barely fit in his vehicle i always remember even when you were thick alex makes you look small like a child Yeah. yeah and he's like dude i just turned and i sneezed extraordinarily hard and i i swear i blew up on my back <laughs> so to which happens add credence to that yeah if i have a back pain or my stomach and you're sneezing you can and feel i it. sneeze yeah it is terrifying yeah like if your back's like tender yeah you're like Ugh. and you have to sneeze i get scared because right. i know the pain's coming it's it's almost like a knife stab like what i imagine a knife stab to be i never got stabbed <laughs> by a knife i got sliced by a knife once though <laughs> My brother sliced me with a knife. I got stabbed by a butter knife. A butter knife? I stole a calzone from my college roommate out of his. So he's <laughs> sitting over there. I'm sitting here. And I, I ran over and took this calzone. And this dude's like 6'7". And he huge, just. Huge. Ran at me with a butter knife sliced through here and landed on top of me on my bed. 
So this is like just like slightly bleeding, but I had the calzone and it was like gushing tomato sauce everywhere. And he, he like I'm. Saying, and I'm you're like, just giggling. Too, you no. stabbed me. <laughs> you freaking stabbed me. And he sees like the, the tomato sauce. He's like, oh my god. He's like this only child, goody two shoes kid from from Rhode Island. It, that that's only my only story about stabbing. That's I, mine wasn't much better. My brother just yeah. So so going back to the other most recent, I've had points. Where like squatting, actually squatting for me, we were like, quick one, three weeks out from Big Tens. This is back when you were at Penn State. Yeah, and I'm like warming up, 405s on the bar, and my other roommate Steve Myers goes, "Yo, you know, don't hurt yourself here. Like just being a tool, because <laughs> like we would start our sets at like 475. We would do low bar. Um, so I put 405, 315, 405, go down. And, dude, I felt like somebody literally shot me in the back. And I had to, like, crawl out of the weight room. And then they came and got me on a little wheelchair, wheeled me to the elevators, went downstairs, and I had to lay. Dude, it, it was terrible. I had to lay in the trainer's room with, like, the these, like, things that just came out that they could attach to my back. I couldn't squat or do legs for the next, like, two and a half weeks. And I actually ended up. I didn't throw. I think I got like ninth at Big Tens that year, so this would have been my sophomore year, mainly because of this, my back. But recently, this was the one I wanted to share. I'm running, and I'm just. What pulling. mile are you in? You, you 5K in, 10K in? Yeah, probably like six or seven miles. So all right, so like 10K, 10 yeah. plus. We're going right. Be and, civilized, Dane. Yeah. Kilometers. <laughs> okay, so I'm like trotting, and I turn to look. And like as I did that to see it, because I was gonna cross to to turn, checking the rear view. Right, I turned, and I feel like there was like a little, just like a slight alteration in the middle of the road. Yeah, and my foot like dropped a little bit, and as I did that, dude, it was like an immediate like, poof, like just from running, and I could, I was like, dude, what? Like, like that's bad. And I, I, I just kept going, and I made it all the way back. And by the time I was sitting in the sauna, like trying to like loosen up and recover, I was like, this is going to be, it's, it's for me, I always know it's like a three to five day ordeal where it's like the first two days is brutal. <laughs> the third day I can start to do like specific mobility work. The fourth and fifth day I'll do mobility and strength work. And then they can really slowly ease back. Did you into no stuff. notice as like you aged in your athletic <laughs> career, just like athletics in general and working out? Depending on what part of your body got hurt, you knew how long until you'd be normal. Yeah. All yeah. right. I, I was just wa wondering if that wasn't only me because you know how I would always get that uh the adductor thing. Yeah, yeah. I knew it was twelve weeks before I was pain free when yeah. it happened. It's like I, oh gosh. I knew I would have to spend about four weeks of like box squatting. Yeah. And I could only clean up to a certain weight, or it'd be like lights out type of thing. And it would just reset. Yeah. And I'd just be like, all right, you just got to go through it. Right, right. <laughs> I think that that's, I mean, I do think that that's one thing with elite level athletes now, especially as our throws group is getting older, like knowing, you know, Alex using that example, Alex is 31 now. So it's like, he knows when his back is yeah. going. And what's, what's funny is like the next week when he did his squat. So about six days later, he was able to do like 405. Now this week he's up back at like 550 for yeah his like sets of doubles that we're doing the crazy so strong and he uh, jumps so damn high too yeah he can jump really high like it's insane watching someone that large move like that it's like he's like a dude it's literally like watching a gorilla like his arms are so long and it's like he's got shorter legs he's he's samoan like just looking at his build it's like yeah. they have very long arms short legs and they're just Huge. I remember the first time I met him too. The, him and I started talking about manga and anime. And you're just like sitting there, like what? Oh yeah, he loves anime. He loves. Yeah. All, I mean, no. He's into Pokemon now too. Cool. So I think the 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 stuff. If you didn't know, we're talking about hurting your back. Yeah, I think that's that's what I was just gonna say. Is like the 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 back injuries. I mean, I I I think you first have to look at it like, is this something that just happened now like is this an acute thing is it just happening or is this from some type of chronic issue um and is that chronic issue potentially caused by some type of movement issue with mobility and then the, another factor is if it's an acute thing 
is it a technical, a mobility thing, or was there some type of trauma? And that's where it's like you get a wrestler or, um, I mean, even actually what's interesting, like a field hockey player when they, when they, let's say they, if they like pass the ball and then they get hit, oftentimes that's when they will hurt their back. Or a football player when they have contact and get folded in a really weird position. Yeah. That's another. Usually you see they're like, yeah, the helmet like kind of crunch in a weird way. Right, right. So it's like you you can see, essentially through through those those scenarios. Okay, how can we approach this one from a strength aspect, but also this is almost like diving therapist. into like a chaos coordination type of yeah. idea, right? Because yeah. sometimes those are the pos- based off that like that's the position you're going to get hurt in. Yeah. Right. Like it's one thing to be able to control your body in space. It's another thing to control your body in space and then take contact yeah, as well. Yeah. Cause it's like, a it's a whole nother level important. of like how to do it. Um, and just briefly, like where I'm envisioning right now is like, all right, you can attack that with reflexive strength movements, mm-hmm. but you can never load reflexive strength movements effectively to legitimately prepare for like that type of contact in a wrestling match in a football game or even a field hockey game, I would think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, in a chaos-coordinated position. Like, if I'm up like this and here comes that safety, like, I'm getting blasted, that's going to hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a tough thing where it's like how – I don't know how to even do that without – you know, there there's there's certain drills that you can do where, like, okay, this, this is what my thought was. Like, someone's doing the Jan Jump series, right, and they jump. Okay. They land on their right leg, and when they would land on their right leg, like as they land, someone like pushes into them, yeah, and then they have to like plant and stop. But you can't. It's hard to quantify that, and you don't want to disrupt. Their, you don't want to disrupt what you're trying to get out of the plyometric series, just so that you can start training like, like impact, like force impact. Yeah, like yeah. The, it's not necessary. It's it's overkill. Yeah, like the closest. I think you get to that on a regular basis is technical coordination movements. Yeah, probably. Like, just catching a clean. Yep. Like, when it gets heavy, you get smacked, like, and you start learning how to brace. Yeah. And if you can, a lot of times, if you can brace through your trunk effectively, like, you can prevent the lower back stuff, right? Yeah. Like, it's going to help with that. It's, though, how do you train to brace the core to an impact in odd positions and right. more so rotated positions right, right. or like hyper extended positions, like yeah. to things like that. It's tough to do. It's really hard to do. And I think that's where it's like people that are free frequently getting back injuries. I think oftentimes for in my experience, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to lay this out in my experience People that are getting contact back injuries, you know, oftentimes that will be related to some type of strength issue. Uh, and I'm, I'm thinking about, like, kids front squatting. Like, if you can get kids to front squat to a certain point, to a certain weight, that almost immediately can alleviate a very large amount of, of like, issues with your erectors. And, and because now you're going to have a little bit better mobility. Uh, you're going to be able – you're going to be able to hold an upright posture. Your trunk control is going to be a little bit more stable or more, I almost want to say stiff. And then that stiffness can transfer. Yeah, it, um, when <clears throat> talking about lower back, right and stuff like around it, like as we've been having discussions back and forth, stiff is one of the words I kept wanting to use, but also to it, like stiff has other negative connotations. Right. Like, I, I don't know. When I hear stiff, I think of like someone who can't move. Yeah. Like they jump and like, they don't bend their legs or like absorb into an elastic yeah, position. Fluid. Like, yeah, yeah, they yeah. won't quarter squat. It's just like, it's almost like they're trying to throw a stake into the ground. And right. it's like, how do you expect to rebound or jump? Right. And, but at the same time though, like sometimes that is the appropriate position right. for the trunk. Like it has to be stiff or else like, dude, injury may be coming your way. Like, yeah. Um, I'm glad you started talking about the front squat. Great absolute strength movement, right? right. And um, you're talking about the lower back per- peripherally. Like you never think of a squat. Well, I shouldn't say you never. If you're listening to this, you think of a squat as an a-, a core exercise. Like yeah, you do. But to you, your what is the cool word? Non-athletic regular NARPS. Yeah, NARPS. and like you're 
people just starting out, they don't see that right away. Like they have to learn that, be taught that, that when you squat, like, Hey, you're training your trunk too. Yeah. When you're any movement you're doing, you're training it. You're but not you're nose. That. You're not dive bombing. But then when you front squat, like it sort of kind of shifts a little bit to the back and personal like story here. When I would weight lift, I never noticed really the lower back work from front squatting because I was cleaning every day. I was front squatting twice a week type of stuff. Right. Now that I'm more sports performance and I'm only front squatting like once a week at most. You feel a little more? I can feel my lower back light up every time I do it. It has to loosen up to the weight right, right away. Right. And it, like I wasn't used to that feeling because when I did front squat, like it was just you did it constantly. But now that like you're, I'm kind of like a seven days removed from it every time I do it. It's noticeable. Yeah, I can feel that. And I think that's so intriguing. And it's like, it's cool. Like, I understand it. And at the same time, then, too, I'm like, well, what else could I do? So, like, to put something in the middle of the week, like an accessory movement to kind of, like, not make that happen for me, too. Probably a goblet squat, like a light, like a one 100-pound goblet squat or something, okay. or a pause or a zombie squat. I, I wanted to share that when I had originally started front squatting every single day for two years Uh uh-huh part of that was also that i i didn't used to deadlift at all like i would never deadlift and the reason why i would never deadlift is because i would get up to around like 5 5 20 and i would undoubtedly hurt my back and that's when i just was like you know let's blow up my front squat yeah i want to just front squat all the time i got to get this thing up over 200 kilos to be respectable and then see what happens after that. And then that's when I went back and then deadlift 585, 600 after not deadlifting. Yeah, it blew for, up your deadlift. Yeah, just for two two plus years I didn't deadlift, but I PR'd by, you know, 80 plus pounds. And it's like that I think at the time for me, and I also think this today is like zombie squats and front squats and even to a point single leg front squats are some of the quickest ways the quickest ways in a goblet squat to like like to me a zombie squat or a goblet squat should be the first thing that you do at a light load when you're coming back from a back okay. injury and then you would you from would, an absolute strength type of movement the yeah. way you could sub in there like hey yeah. you can't load a heavy back squat like it's yeah. not happening it's not gonna but happen. we yeah. can do this to get you yeah and let's go like 40 percent for a week and a half two weeks and then let's go to 55, see how it feels. Then let's go to 65. I actually just had a, a ice hockey player that I trained, and he he banged up his lower back. He's skating a little bit more because he's getting close to being in season. So he's skating quite a bit more, bangs up his lower back, catching a clean and like dumping his elbows a little bit down in the hole. Comes back, and we gave him like a little protocol. Comes back, he's fine. And then he just tweaks it just a little bit, and he's like, I, I just don't want to do – full cleans until after the season because it's it's like two and a half weeks away and he's getting ready to like yeah he's nervous he, yeah. he wants to play in the season yeah like, i'm like dude that's fine let's do like either pause front squats or zombie squats or goblet squats and we can do power cleans it's going to be perfectly fine and that's where we're at now like two to three weeks now where he's like i have zero back pain and he's followed this basic back procedure to still maintain his strength and increase his explosiveness while dealing with the fact that he's getting more volume on the ice. And I think that's another thing is like that, that side to side, a little bit of rotation can, can lead to putting people in a precarious position of, you know, later on, then he's fatigued. He's lifting after ice hockey and his, his trunks, a little bit more fatigued. And then that just puts him in a bad spot. Here at Garage Strength, we always preach the importance of nutrition and a healthy diet to create a strong fueled athlete. That's why we're happy to work with today's sponsor, Range Meal Bars. Range Meal Bars can act as meal replacements if you're on the go or packing up for long hikes in the woods. Each Range Bar is barely bigger than a deck of cards, but packs 700 calories each. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of calories. Like, you could go trekking for minutes and a, not just A minutes, long like trek. Hours. hours. That could even get you through the desert. <laughs> yes, probably. <laughs> Range bars use all natural, high quality ingredients like honey, molasses, nut butters, and chia. Not brown rice syrup and soy protein isolate like many of the other bars available and are certified gluten free. 
being perfectly honest, we've been trying these for a few weeks now, and our employees love them and are smashing them so much so that some of the employees eat them all when I come home and I can't try them. <laughs> That's accurate. We finished our first two boxes in a week. I didn't have any of them until the next round came in, and we had to keep them away hidden in our closet for podcasting. Literally, Range Meal Bars is offering a killer 20% off deal for listeners of the Garage Strength Podcast. Just apply the discount code Garage Strength. That's a capital G and a capital S there at checkout. Thanks, Range, for sponsoring our podcast. Now, let's get back to the episode. Woo-hoo. No, that's a great point there. Like, just thinking about it from the lens of like, and as a coach too and programmer, like, how do I or how do you kind of take that into account, right? Yeah. Like, hey, there's a lot of rotation, anti-rotation in sports, right. like as it's happening when they come into the gym to train and let's say like in season and like you're trying to roll their compensation with that. Yeah. Like what are some of the visions you have to make? Like, Hey, I need to protect their lower back, especially if it's an athlete, you know, has proclivities to like lower back issues. Like, all right, we're zombie squatting instead of front squatting. We're goblet squatting instead of zombie. We squatters. might warm up with reverse hyper. Yeah. Like actually part of a warm up, And uh, just put that in. Yeah. Another thing was, <clears throat> Wrestling, okay, South Dakota State, when we went into the last parts of preseason, we're doing glute hand work, we're doing banded back extensions. I like banded back extensions for wrestlers because it's pulling on their on their head, and so it's very similar to when they're getting a the collar tie put on them. We're doing a ton of back work. First four weeks, I'm on the team call. We're about a week into the program, and this kid's like, we don't have any direct back work. And I was like, well, yeah, that's ex- – okay, let me just clarify this. You guys just went from wrestling twice a week to now you're wrestling five days a week and you're wrestling live in one and a half of those practices, basically for three total hours, almost a week, like at least live scrambles. You have dudes on your neck all the time. And last year in my notes, RDLs, like dumbbell RDLs, even at lighter weight, their hamstrings and lower back started to go after about three weeks. So I was like, you're just, you just increased volume on the mat. Let's go a program where there's no back work because we just killed you with a high volume program. Now you have this first program to adapt to the four weeks of high volume in season. And then now the next program, I'll bring in some direct back work because you've adapted to the. I like that little feedback loop from the year previous to what you got from them. Yeah, you used it. Hey, I have a question. What, What happened to the back work? Like, you know. One kid there probably was responding well to it, enjoyed it too. Yeah, and yeah. you're like, hey, this is the reason why. And I'm sure yeah. then it was like, gotcha, coach, like, yeah. on it. Well, and at the same time, he knows we're still cleaning, we're still doing front yeah. squats and single leg stuff. So. And that's one of the things, like to that kid's question and what we were saying earlier, like front squat peripherally is a is trunk, it? it's a core exercise. It crushes your lower back. Yeah. Like, yep. and your erectors too. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. you got to stay upright with that. Um, I wanted to ask you a question around the front rack single leg squat. Okay. Because, like, I've been having fun with single leg squats. I haven't jumped into a front rack one yet. They're terrible. Like, give us some, like, perspective on, like, relative. Like, so, like you just had a kid. What I don't know how old the kid was, but he did 405 for doubles on each leg. There was a short put out with it. Uh, uh, Jeff? I guess. I yeah. don't know him. And it, it's just a savage. Like, mm-hmm. And it, it doesn't look hard at all. Like, mm-hmm. it flies. Um, What's he front squatting, hypothetically, like in a relative sense to that weight? So Front squat single leg or front squat? Single leg. Like a single leg front squat. So he, he can single leg squat like 60, 182. 60%. 60% of that. Yeah, so I think what that's is a that? really good start. So you look so at f- it. That's almost 100 kilos. Yeah. Right, it's a little bit more, like maybe one ten. I think I think he would. I think one ten would be around where he would be like, "Yo, this is hard." Um, I think Jason actually might have gotten up to like one twenty on it at one oh, point wow. while he was still throwing. And so, like, is that an in season type of transfer you can make to kind of lighten the load, yeah, but for still sure. hit like? And 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 this this goes back to it too. Is like, all right, it's front loaded. It'll be a a bit more quads, a, a little bit more glutes. But you're still getting some mobility through the hip, which is going to help open everything up there. So that can alleviate some back issue. Uh, you have to be really rigid. I think rigid is a really good way to think about what you have to do with your trunk. 
you have to be really rigid and upright because you can't dump forward at all. Yeah. So that makes you have to lighten the load. And that's where Talk it's about like, chaos coordination. You dump a front squat done. in yeah. a single yeah. leg. So it's like now if you if you if you just said like, okay, whatever I do on my back, I should start at sixty percent and just slowly build from there. And I think that that and what what I immediately feel for me personally is in my ab. Immediately. Okay. Some clarification. Is sixty percent where you would start or where you could potentially build to? That's where you start. All right. So I think you could probably Dude, I don't I don't see anyone starting higher than that. Okay. And I and I would I would bet it would be three or four weeks before they would get out of like that sixty percent area. What would um sets and reps would you go there? Would you do like I I, would, I know Taman says he'll have them do like new kids like sometimes like six sets of five each leg like something oh yeah he'll yeah. just brutalize them with that where you go i that. like i like to using it as a drop where they'll do like the on the back they'll and, push and then they'll, they'll okay their high rep drop sets they'll just do like a, almost like a cross bodybuilder position because it's i do think it's good for for the clean front rack but i also think there's a point too from the trunk perspective that dude just go cross bodybuilder front yeah. squat and just bang that out with the single leg style and you're going to get what you what you need out of it and i think too it's like you know actually look i think we talked about her last week kaya the snowboarder she did 225 for uh two on each leg and so we talked about that i think over a box right okay so she's just been we've been hammering single leg squats for like five programs now and that's something that we can do with her is like okay drop set one or two sets nine on each side and she's going at like 50 percent of what she hit on the back so that's just like another little way to add volume not beat her up but then also get something out of her trunk and she starts her in-season snowboarding starts in november so now she's going to have that feeling from the front that feeling from the back and when she's taking a big jump or something and landing like yeah. she's going to be able to handle it that's what i was thinking always every time i watch like a snowboarder or skateboarder do something i just see depth drops like yeah crazy type of things like that just that yeah. ability to absorb and take that it's well so i, I it's funny I'll, I'll try to relate this as quickly as i can i had that podcast with um the soccer guy right will and we were talking about what's happening when you plant your front leg and you're kicking how do you increase your your striking ability or your yeah. exit velocity of the soccer ball when you know that answer tell me because it's one of the ki things my eight-year-old needs to work on incredibly and i think it all comes from the way he does his hips with uh his torso so think about the front squat or the single leg squat the single yeah. leg squat is essentially the plant leg when you're when you're planting and then i actually look at it as and like, the chest forward like that too right yeah so i actually look at like it's similar to a trebuchet. I can see exactly what you're saying. <laughs> your, your trebuchet is that lead leg planting, and then your hip yeah. is the pivot point here that this this foot comes around. Boom. But you typically will plant as you're, you have this massive backswing back here to create a long stretch, just yeah. like a baseball player, just like a golfer. Same concept. And then you swing through. And the reason why I'm relating that to the snowboarder is that that depth drop position or that single leg position that you see a snowboarder or a skier hit is correlated to the strength in a single leg squat. A soccer player, the more force that they can put into that plant leg, now that deceleration happens at a faster pace. So you slow down the fastest, yeah. and then that leads into more energy into that swing that comes through and is the trebuchet. And it's like, it's all the same principles. It's just strengthening, making sure there's enough elasticity to get through so that there's enough mobility, that you're healthy. And that's where all this stuff, too, is like with a front squat, you don't, or a goblet squat, or a, or a zombie squat, or uh, a single leg front squat. You, you know, and when you're thinking about the back, reverse hypers, posterior twists, that's why I like posterior twists so much, is like you don't want to have a leak in that chain from the plant leg into the, the trebuchet foot, whatever yeah. you want to call it. And so that that can then. Can you describe to, the posterior twist for everyone? So the posterior twist would be, if you have a reverse hyper machine, or even if you, I I'll take a band and I'll hook a band to an immovable object, and if I'm facing directly to like a reverse hyper, I turn ninety degrees, and then I I lean forward on an angle across my body. So if I'm 
my left elbow would get past my right knee. And I go all the way past my right knee, get this huge stretch, and then I pull up and I squeeze into my belly button. And I you'll feel that in your planted right glute. Okay. And then your lower left back, which is like your QL. That's gotcha. like the side bender. The side bender. And I always like to think about like the airbender like, <laughs> ang yeah yeah or yeah exactly. whatever the the new one is that i didn't watch right so it's like you're you're exactly so you, is it kira or, i don't Cora? know cora 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 yeah there we go i come across and pull in it and then i try and squeeze that lower back and i dude i haven't found i you honestly consider that rotational or anti-rotation I, I asked john that and he was like he's like i mean you're rotating it's a rotational yeah. strength that you would develop so that you could in theory prevent rotation when you don't want it yeah but he was also like it's also going to help you with rotation on that same plane like we'll, we'll I, put we'll put five cents in one and five cents in the other yeah, and see I how our index stock works i out. almost <laughs> feel like too like that's like yeah it's such a gray area of discussion and maybe i'm wrong somebody can comment down below hey. about that like i feel like a payoff press, you know what you're doing. Yeah. This one, it's like, and I actually think this is much more dynamic. And because you can do a banded or you can do it with the reverse hyper, you could, you know, you can do it multiple different ways. And then you can even do it like this, okay, with the legs, with the reverse hyper. And then what's interesting is then when you start here with like a medicine ball and you throw it backwards, uh -huh. you almost feel it at high speed too. It's interesting. You can start to screw around with like, a posterior twist with a med ball, which yeah, is ballistic. Basically right? how you load it implement wise, speed wise then too, right? Yeah, is what yeah, it sounds exactly. like. Nice. Yeah. You know, it's cool that you're talking about reverse hyper and you brought it up a little bit earlier and we're talking about lower back strength. It seems like we're getting, a, we can get away from like absolute strength movements. Yeah. And we didn't even talk about a deadlift. Like we didn't mention it, which right. also can hurt your back, which we both had stories. <laughs> yeah. You could get there. I, I was a young kid. And I think that's what I was another doing. thing is like, there's no lift that I have had people do that has injured more backs. And I'm not saying you shouldn't deadlift. All I'm saying is that kids will go in and they're not as focused because they're like, oh, this isn't as hard as a clean. So it's, they're just ranking. And, and it's, it's, not it's not as not scary as a squat either. Yeah, it's not the lift's <laughs> fault. It's, it's just like that's the way it is. And so I actually like to delay using it until they're freaking 30, right? Like yeah. I don't like – we can I recently took up deadlifting again. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You hit 243 <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, it's fun. But then like when you watch like it happens it's like, oh, that was uh, kind of boring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Silliness. Well, let's talk about accessory movements okay. around like the lower back. You mentioned yeah. the reverse hyper. I have a few here you could tell me if I'm pushing it a little too much cuz I may be hitting the hamstring more than the lower back. Nordic curls and razor curls. Uh, I I actually it's funny because today we were talking about the bent knee glute ham with the knees out because that's going to be glutes and hamstrings and lower back. And I think that, um, dude, especially with a short-limbed individual, shorter-limbed individuals always get back pain typically because their hamstrings are so incredibly weak. And it also can lead to knee issues. And if you can hammer them with razors and hammer them with Nordics, it almost always will alleviate lower back issues. And some of them will get a little bit of a lower back pump when they're doing Nordics, which is weird. Taman's like this. Taman has, is, is, and, and Eric, both those guys have short legs, right? Haley. Haley's hamstrings get slaughtered. And then all of a sudden, like two or three days later, she's, she's not rotating as much. She feels a little bit better. So it's like, I believe that there is a correlation to Nordics and razors. We can almost look at if you think of like high fantasy type of thing and like an invading army, like here comes the goblin horde. Yeah. 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 And the like walls. Yeah. Is like the lower back. Yeah. The hamstrings are like the moat and like the spikes yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. So they can't even get to your lower back if we protect those a little I bit. I think that's a really good yeah. analogy. I know it's a weird one, but it's, I love that. I've been reading a, which, which one is it? The first law trilogy okay. recently. Anyway, and yeah. I'm in the third book, The Last Argument of Kings. And uh, the one like sort of antagonist character is attacking the like the Northmen up in the, the hill dudes. I forget his name. It's like I can't pronounce it. And the, they're 
they're getting attacked, but they dug like trenches in front and like put the spikes up. But but using that, it's like <laughs> we know. I mean, it, it's term is posterior chain. It's like yeah. If we can make sure the hammies are good and the glutes are good and even the upper back's good, we can make sure that then that targeted area that it, it, that the it's like giving it a good support system, it's right? One, it's exactly it's exactly like that. It's and, like surround your lower back with stronger individuals and yeah, it gets stronger it'll be, itself. It'll be ninety five percent of the five people it's surrounded by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if um, you hang out with people with weak backs, you're probably gonna have a weak one yeah. yourself. Man, I gotta start hanging out with people with, with stronger strong backs. backs. <laughs> no. um, just let's... hanging out with Masons, a whole bunch of Masons, <laughs> like Mason the person, or like Masons, no, like, like the they're, they're carrying like concrete yeah. block every day. Dude. Huge forearms and huge backs. Hey, all parents out there who want their children to have strong, strong backs, don't let them use their locker. Yep. Tell them they have to carry every single book with yep. them in their book bag. And make and them give use them, wheelbarrows on the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> give them five. Wait, like basically sixth through 12th grade doing that. Yeah. They'll it will good. work. It'll yeah. be good. Essentially like a five minute carry every like between yeah. each class while they're sitting there and their hamstrings are just shrinking. And then when they're fat like me in high school, they're complaining because they have so much in their backpack that they're sweating be- even when it's snowing outside. <laughs> <laughs> and the backpack stain is still on my back. I feel like I just read like an onion uh, headline that was like uh, fat dad still say it's short weather or something <laughs> yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I don't know. It was along those lines. All right, let's keep going with I'm going to. Once again, I'm going to go not directly to the lower back with accessory movements. Um, hollow body holds and ironclad oh, abs. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. And hollow body rocks. How do they, like, strengthen the lower back, even though you think you're targeting more, like, the abdomen? I think, I mean, that's almost, it's it's similar to, like, the Jefferson curl. It's, like, one of those things where you, when you start to feel and you're, like, pushing your belly button into the bench, like, you're starting to feel how to actually brace, right? And you're you're here and you, you can feel that. I almost you should think, all see Dane bracing if you're yeah, not you watching this Yeah, you almost feel like video. your wall pushing down in, in your lower back and through your lumbar spine. And It's like the battering ram trying to come yeah, through. Yeah, to come through, right. And it's like <laughs> what happens is you just learn how to brace effectively. And I think that, um, you know, you, you go here and then you can go... And you can have almost the same feeling even when you fill with air. And yeah. I think that's another factor is that a lot of people that hurt their back, they're breathing out at like the bottom of a squat or okay. something like that. They're not holding their air in the entire time or they breathe out at the bottom of a dip. The core is the gate in the wall they're trying to break yeah, through. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think that that's, that's like a, a good example. And, and honestly, like, dude, this is one thing that we do in Peak Strength. And this episode is brought to you by Peak Strength. One thing that we did designing Peak Strength is that a lot of the accessory work is something like a reverse hyper paired with an ab roller or something like that, or a reverse hyper or a glute ham or a back extension or a, a banded good morning paired with some type of ab direct movement so that now you're training the posterior chain, you're training the anterior sequence together. And then when you're doing the other side, like let's say if I'm doing a reverse hyper, I know I can feel my abs brace better on the reverse hyper. And then when I'm doing the ab wheel, and I'm pairing it with reverse hyper. Well, now I'm actually holding that stable position with my hip and I'm not letting my hip sink if I'm doing an ab wheel because of the way I did the reverse hyper and it sort of feeds back and forth. So it's interesting you, you're you bringing this up because it's exactly how we designed the accessory portions. Uh, it's like I did that on purpose almost. <laughs> yeah, inside peak strength. So check out peak strength. You got five free workouts to improve your trunk yeah. control. And if you're vegan, you can chew on one of these molasses, ginger, sea salt range meal bars too. Like, yeah, these range meal bars are ab- ab- absolutely I, insane. And you said you can feed a small family with one of these. Like, well, think if you got two of them. If you had two, dude, that's like one of the your morning, daily one night. caloric yeah. intake. Well, you could split. Like, let's say I'm I'm thinking about like Lincoln would have one before, like for breakfast, one after. Yeah. football practice you're good or for the day kid yeah you're, you're okay that's it you're on your, your <laughs> you don't space, get space station ranges today <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> that's funny that, that's actually true <laughs> no they're yummy too avon's been loving them you can tell too i, I think jason i, I want to know who eats more of these is jason or yvonne oh, man because it's like this is a full box and we're gonna these come were here. empty yesterday these boxes when, when i was exactly. here exactly and that's where it's like how who is eating them i'll come in like who ate them all today? I wanted to have one. And there was four <laughs> last night. 
All gone. All gone. That's 2,800 calories out the window. All right, real quick. Got three exercises we want to discuss, but we got to beat okay. rapid fire here with lower back. Kettlebell swings, back extensions, and good mornings. Thoughts, opinions. I prefer kettlebell swings and back extensions. I think good mornings are good, but I... I just, dude... One of the first power lifters I ever trained is named Frank Frank Duca. Sumo pulled uh, over. It was like three nineteen, which it was like seven oh nine. Okay, so he actually threw. He actually introduced me to my wife. He would do when we would program seated good mornings. He would do seated good mornings, and he would do this real crazy way. He would sit down on a box. He'd sit down and lean forward, and then as he would come through an arch, he would stand up, and he'd sit down. Almost like a forward. Kang squat. Yeah, with a box. And it was like just to overload his, his good mornings and to help him coming out of the bottom position, also to help him with his pull. It's a really great way to do it. But, dude, he would put like 405 on his back, do it with like a, a lower bar position, and just lean. And I I was always like, dude, Frank, how? Like, And I would prog- I'd make his programs. And I'd put it in there, and it would never bother him. But for me to do that, like I, I, I am so intrigued. Like I'm thinking about going home and trying this, dude. I, I was always scared to have. Some, now I think if you have a duffalo bar or if you have a cambered bar or even maybe a lighter, it'd be a little lighter with safety squat bar. But probably a duffalo or a cambered. I mean, even a straight bar, you you could do it. It, it's freaking tough. Yeah, I'm thinking about the standing up because I've done seated good mornings. And the hardest part of the movement is after you're done the good morning standing up. Yeah. So it's almost like a like you feel like I feel that in like my glutes, my hip like oh yeah. type of thing yeah, yeah, as sure. well. Like when I go for it. So it's not that I dislike good mornings. It's that I've always shied away because we do snatch and clean and front squat and back squat, single leg squat quite a bit. Uh huh. Um that I've always shied away. But you just I, have a, a preference of movement that you think yeah. Does it better or just works within the system yeah, more efficiently? Right, right, exactly. I actually have, I would do jerk box good mornings, and I could do that pretty well. And like I, from a dead stop, yeah, type of thing. It's yeah. almost like a pin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but I do prefer back extensions and kettlebell swings. I think kettlebell swings, especially if you're like a wrestler or somebody like that who's in a longer, you have you have dude, to have the strength forearm endurance. pumping that too for a yeah. wrestler is. Well, it's also like, dude, if you teach them how to like deal with a crazy amount of momentum yeah, and it's super fast too like right. it, it's super explosive it's a ballistic movement like, and they start to learn how to use their heels yeah. or their hips their hips and you'll see this is one thing i wanted to bring up quick about the kettlebell swing if you have somebody who can't keep their heels down on the ground during a swing and you give them like three or four cues and then you're like, all right, put your toes up, and they still have their heels popping when they when they, they can't they can't engage their hips. These people are like the most unathletic human beings on the path. <laughs> they can't do box jumps and repeat, dude. They cannot. They can't take like <laughs> their body just. I feel like there's there's an avatar for this it's, person it's that does like, exist. <laughs> it's like, come on, dude. How do you not know how to sit on your heels a little bit so you don't like do this weird hitchy thing? Yeah, I just wanted to. For you ready for those, some overrated, underrated? Yeah, for those coaches out there. All right, overrated, underrated. Uh, Romanian chair, like isometric holds, overrated, underrated. So if I'm on like a back extension, yeah, or even like I would think almost too. I'm thinking the one I saw in like Bosch, where it looks more like a um, he they would do it like single leg, almost like how Lou does it. Yeah, yeah. And they'll just start piling all the five kilo plates on. So his back. I would call this underrated because from everything I've read in in data is that. Th- the erectors especially respond quite well to isometric action. So like you're putting weight on somebody and just, and they've got to hold it. And that's actually why I do like doing like the fast movements too. And you got to hold that position. I think that I, I would underrate them in the sense that you can hold that position for like a minute and then take the weight off and make them go through the concentric and the eccentric and dude, their backs will be bulletproof. All right. Well, this leads right into the next one. Overrated, underrated. Uh, back extensions or any other type of GHD work to do instead. Would you overrate it, underrate it for the lower back? Underrated, dude. I, I would say do freaking glute hams five days a week. I actually was 
complaining about this with Haley the other day. Like, she could do reverse hyperglute ham and Nordics literally four or five days a week. No complaints. Yeah, and it's like, dude, you ha- you have to, especially the reverse her- hyper and glute ham. Do a glute ham to warm up and a reverse hyper to finish off your workout every day. If you're like a a strength athlete, it's phenomenal. It doesn't mean that you go to full tilt every day. Yeah. What can you get away with? Like, what's the minimum dose? Like 70 percent. Like two sets. Can I get three, that in three, three sets? sets? Three sets. All yeah. right. It's the one thing. Sometimes I talk to people and they're like, three sets. That's a lot of sets and i'm just like dude i feel like i just got started like yeah that's i don't want to say that's a problem but coming from like a garage strength system like three sets is like i guess i'm doing 30 reps <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's funny>. yeah. <laughs> you know, like you get what i'm saying yeah um all right last one and i think i know this one overrated underrated banded good mornings specifically banded good mornings well i i, I just said i liked using them but i Hmm. I'm trying to think how I should do this. Uh oh. I like them. using them for warm ups f- because it it triggers somebody's hips to come through on. A, so as an accessory, probably a little overrated. Overrated because it's too light. But as a warm up, though. Yeah, a warm up for someone who is a weightlifter or somebody who struggles with like a, a good vertical jump. It's really good to potentiate your your hips and to get your hips and if you even bend your knees a little, it's really good to get that feeling. I also think it's a great movement if you do like a banded good morning with a knee bend to teach somebody how to arch their back. If you put a band on a kid like Reese, right? Yeah. Now he knows how to arch his back. A typical kid, Sanderson, does not know. He can do a bridge and he knows how to bridge and do it so he can cheat a little bit in that way. But if I put a band over his back and he stands on the on the band, he immediately goes like this. Okay. It's like, your, it's like a reflex. I, and it probably is actually a reflex I should learn what the name is, but they immediately learn how to reflexive strength movement. Yeah. They (laughs) learn how to hold that tension. So it's a great exercise for that. And it's great for teaching that hip extension. But I do think as far as an accessory, you just can't load it. That's almost like it's not as heavy of a load. Yeah. I know reflect. Sorry, this is like off topic, but not reflexive strength work is typically reserved for more advanced athletes. Yeah. Yeah. Elite athletes to use. It feels like, just through that this conversation, there's an entry level reflexive strength movement that for novices that just teach bracing patterns. Ooh, that's a so I bet <laughs> I can find out what that reflex is. Yeah. From the neck. And all, wrestlers get that too. As soon as you collar tie somebody, yeah. they immediately like want to pull their head up. And they aren't they starting to teach not to do that? They to like go with it yeah, so you don't so, tire yourself out. And so that you're because your opponents know that's how you can set up a shot. Yeah. Heavy on the head, heavy on the head, heavy on the head. Then you can set your shot up. But if if you're not, if you don't react the way that you standardly would react, well, now Mate, it changes everything. On. All right. Audience questions. Discord, over a thousand still. Yeah. Jason, I'm going to keep dunking on you that with that. And I have another one I'm going to get you to do yet, too. Hey, we got to get Discord to submit videos to us. Yes. So if bring you that up. Submit. I, what our goal is, is that. Our goal is that Discord, Instagram, um, TikTok, YouTube, you guys would email us lifts that you did that are like PRs or maybe even a crazy lift. Yeah, something and, out there too. And we're going to re- react to it inside of the podcast. And if you do it in the Discord, it is very likely it will be seen for the podcast. Yeah. So we know a few of you are active, specifically like Liquidarity right here is a yeah. Discord person. Like, yeah. Um, their question in the top 10 plyos video dane suggested us uh, starting unilateral exercises with your weak side first but didn't elaborate why should we start on the weaker side first i think that's just a way to try and iron out that that weakness and and to give it more time to catch up there's such a disparity that if you're doing your strong side first then your weak side typically what's going to happen is there's going to be some fatigue and that fatigue will carry over to the weak side and then thus you don't have as quality of a rep Versus if you did it first. Yeah. I can, uh, I want to like CC that comment with single leg squats. I always do the weak side first because yeah. it's like, I don't want to go half like 50% into the work and have that like peripheral and then like, fatigue on the trunk. Yeah. And now the legs not working as well yeah. too. And it, it's same mindset type of thing. Yep. Yep. Um, Absolutely. This one's from Reddit. I'm going to mispronounce this. K Nord, Nord, K N O I R D. Canord. 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 Canoid. Canoider. 
Um, will consuming marijuana via an edible the night before a rugby game have a detrimental effect on performance? A lot of the info about this I have found refers to smoking, so I'm wondering if THC in general has a negative effect on athletic performance. I would say I, I don't think that it's going to have a negative effect as long as you're not like scarfing down the whole kitchen cabinet. Like, dude, if you need if you need to like get into a mindset and you want to consume that and watch technical videos and just chill out and go to bed because uh it helps with your anxiety or something like i think it, i think you'll be safe i think it'll be okay Sweet. but you also have to be aware that you know how long is that edible last and- it's probably going to be in your system for at least five days based off of the the newer marijuana test so an in comp test you would test positive yeah so so keep that depends in mind. on how high of a level of competition you're into and <laughs> like sometimes you're i thought you're using that as a pun Oh uh, yeah, sure I was, but well, I was. some most <laughs> I would assume like with rugby and, and things along those lines, they would not be getting income tests. I'm glad you find me funny when I don't even realize I'm being funny. <laughs> you're like as far as how high, <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh man, yeah, that would be my answer. It'd be way better than getting drunk the night before. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, be stupid, dude. You want to hear some silly alcohol-related type stuff with me? I swear, I'd go out. And have like a drink on like a Friday, maybe two. No kidding. A month? If that. Okay. Like within three months. Like just go out one happy hour, maybe with like some coworkers. Have a beer. Have a beer. Go home. I'd lift the next morning. Without question, I would tweak some small muscle. Uh, and I swear to God, it, it was from the alcohol and flaming something just yeah. a little bit. Yeah, just a, a hair. And it would it started it happened like three times, and I'm like, you know what? not worth it i don't care anymore like that little bit of socializing and like sort of social capital just not worth it for what i enjoy more like i'm already like i i can't stomach a hangover to save my life i don't know who can or how people do it dude that's one thing i'm really good at it's crazy but it's weird that little tweak though don't need it in my life like i'd rather spend two hours i think that's good crushing myself and feeling like hell because it hurts so bad then getting a hangover yeah or even just one beer making me tweak a muscle yeah i agree with you i i think it's the worst for athletes it's i think my problem is i just i like getting drunk and like if dj and i are watching a football game like (laughs) penn state game like i'll just run my mouth at him the whole game i just that's my problem you got to understand you can do that without that too you don't need a little more fun this is I, what I don't want to do it though. That's my problem. I feel I I still have. I think I told you this. I still feel, I feel like the next day I feel a little guilty, and he'll even feel that way too. Oh, both of you growing up, but we still do it. Yeah, we're not really growing up. At, we're some, at some point, you'll get there. You'll just be like, you know what? Yo, let's go. I always say this. What if we went like six months without drinking, dude, it would be crazy. Yeah, dude, you'd probably cut off like at least a minute from your marathon time. You'd have less wobble. <laughs> all right head over to peak app the google play store the apple ios store pick up peak strength today for those five free workouts and to strengthen that lower back until next time peace Boing.